My name is uh, Christian Aquilina. I'm one of the consultant paediatric neurosurgeons at the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. Cerebral palsy is one of the commonest conditions we need to deal with in children. Uh, many children with cerebral palsy have normal cognition, but um, in particular they have lower limb spasticity which prevents them walking independently and easily. Selective dorsal rhizotomy is an operation by which we divide some of the nerve roots within the spinal canal. By dividing these nerve roots, the hyperactive spinal reflexes uh, relating to lower limb movements are reduced and this in turn reduces spasticity on a permanent and very effective basis. In this way children can learn, uh, once their spasticity is removed, they can learn to um, walk better and become more independent and more mobile. It can have an, an enormous effect on the children's quality of life. We know that most of these children are actually born prematurely and we also know that premature children tend to have abnormal wiring in the brain. This has been shown extensively by a number of MRI studies where tracking of the nerve fibre tracks shows very significant changes on comparison with normal children. What we want to know is whether a major procedure like selective dorsal rhizotomy by reducing the impact into the spinal canal and, and therefore into the brain can change the way that these um, white matter tracts work and how the grey matter of the brain is actually situated and functions. I would now like to pass you on to Dr. Chris Clark, my colleague who is an expert on the medical physics on MRI. My name is Chris Clark. I lead the Neuroimaging and Neural Network section at the UCL Institute of Child Health. So we can use a very powerful technique called diffusion MRI to look at the microstructure of the living human brain. And in this project, what we're going to do is to look at the connections from a part of the brain called the thalamus to the outer part of the brain, the cortex, um, the motor cortex in particular. And we can look at the connections between these two brain areas using diffusion MRI. So in particular, we know that in cerebral palsy, these particular pathways are abnormal. The question is, how does this brain connectivity change following this procedure. And also, perhaps most importantly, we're very interested to know whether we can predict how well patients are going to do following this procedure by looking at their brain structure prior to having the operation. At UCL, we have the largest concentration of academic expertise in imaging in Europe. And together with this, we have a very excellent and strong partnership between Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children, which is the leading paediatric uh, hospital in Europe, together with the UCL Institute of Child Health, which, it, which is an institute which is dedicated to the study of disease and health in children.